It is an honor and a pleasure to introduce J.P. Howard, a class of 2011 Lambda Fellow in Poetry. Okay, I'm going to read four poems. They aren't too long. The first one is a new one that was workshopped this week, so thank you to my poetry group. Climbing Over Mama. This is for LaShawn, an 11-year-old boy from New York who's a survivor. Lala spilled her juice on the kitchen table. Mama always made me clean up after her. LaShawn, she ain't barely a year old. Clean up after your baby sister. You boys need to be more gentle with her. Mama scolded us. I climbed over Mama. Lala's four plaits had pink bows at the end of each one. I climbed over Mama and out the window of the car. Lala's face was sticky sweet cause she ate her pancakes with her fingers. The water tried to swallow me. Mama tugged at my pants leg as I climbed over her. My brothers and I tickled Lala on her belly. Lala always giggled in her sleep. Mama screamed, I made a mistake as the car sank. I wanted to live so I climbed over Mama. You're all going to die with me, Mama said, as she drove the car off the boat ramp. My brothers and I chased Lala. Her little giggles filled the kitchen that morning. I wanted to live. Mama served me seconds. I loved her pancakes. I climbed over her. I'm swimming away. I'm never looking back. I can still hear. Lala's giggles. Mm. Okay, the next, next poem is a little bit lighter. <laughs> <laughs> Not much, <laughs> okay. Picture perfect. Childhood pictures frame memories. Sad, skinny, light-skinned girl. Straight, stringy hair. Look away. Look away, little girl. Photos. Builds walls, tables, rooms, good hair, pink bows, ruffled dresses, mama's show and tell. Look away, look away, little girl. A mama staged each shot, smiles, poses, all forced. Come on, baby, smile big for mama. Look away, look away, little girl. Little girl sits head down on an ugly faded couch, knobby knees, stuck to plastic. Look away, look away, little girl. The next poem I'm going to read is a Hazal, and it's called What Love Takes. I'm sleeping as I write this. You're standing over me, crying, while Ella belts out, no, no. You can't take that away from me. If this is all I can get, your hand on my shoulder in the dream, lips warm against my neck, I'll take that. The alarm clock becomes enemy. I press snooze every few minutes, search for you, and finally push stop when I can't take it anymore. Please don't mistake this for a love poem. I stopped, I stopped writing those damn things once you left. Anyhow, that last poem I wrote, you wouldn't take it. I called my mama and asked her how she lived all those decades knowing her lover would never fully be hers. She said, child, you just take it. Wake up, rewind daily, tuck kids in. I'm sorry. One second. Tuck kids in. Cook dinner round the clock. Leave patients on the dining room table while making breakfast. And the kids take it. As I wake from the dream, your tears fall from my eyes. And I ask myself, Jay, why do you complicate love? Why can't you just take it? Mm -hmm. 
And the final poem I'm going to read is a short one. Summer night in Greenwich Village. We sip mango margaritas at a sidewalk cafe and wait for a warm breeze. I watch you touch the rim of the glass, salty and wet, droplets of sweat fall down your philtrum. You touch the nape of your neck, push unruly locks into submission, which you twist round and round between your thumb and forefinger. I remember I cannot touch you. So I move my hands down the body of the cold glass. My fingers stroke my neck, feel the cool contrast against my skin. I'd rather rub the lime from your drink over your yielding lips and taste that tartness. Instead, we talk incessantly, push night to her bursting edge, and prepare to leave it behind us without ever talking. Mm -hmm. Thank you.